In this section, we're going to look at scripting languages and markup languages. In the olden days, when I was young, we had to get all our information from books. If you needed to know something, you went to a library. But Tim Berners-Lee changed all that. He was a research physicist, and he needed to get at research papers that were on university computers. So he created the internet. And for that, he needed to be able to show these documents as they would appear in real life. So he created HTML in about 1990, late 1990. Well, that was great. You could get documents, and that's what he created it for. But it was pretty quickly realised that more was wanted from the internet. You wanted to be able to get some information from the user. And that required some sort of scripting language. So instead of having just the markup, the page that presents things to you, you also needed a little programming language that sat alongside. It was Brendan Eich, who was working for Netscape at the time, who decided how JavaScript, as it became known, would work. JavaScript was intentionally not a fully functional programming language. You couldn't do things, for example, like save files. Tim Berners-Lee had set up the internet so that the internet was a one-way process from the server to you. So anything that came back from the user had to be very temporary in nature. And that's why you don't get internet programs storing large files on your computer without you be being asked first. So we needed the scripting language, JavaScript, for interaction. But the downside was no file storage, except for cookies, and they're very small and you can't save anything in there of any importance. This is an example of HTML, a markup language used to create web pages. What happens when you ask for a web page is that this HTML is downloaded to your machine. You don't get the web page, you get the HTML for the web page. Now, if you've never seen HTML before, this may look a little complicated, but in fact it's very trivial. If you can remember that you've got to put your toys away once you've played with them, as your mum told you when you were little, well, you've got HTML pretty well cracked. So this is what comes to your browser. The next stage is that your browser takes this HTML and turns it into what you see on the screen. That's why it takes a moment for the page to render. If your HTML contains some JavaScript, some things that allow you to do things on the web page, so for example, book a, a flight or uh, order a new magazine, well, those are rendered separately. But the JavaScript still comes with the HTML. It's still part of the same document. There is no magic. Your browser just is a presentation machine.